Okay, let's take a look at problem 14-2A in front of you, which deals with straight line amortization of a bond discount and a premium. Um, let's tackle a part one first, which is prepare the January 1st, 2004 journal entry to record the bond's issuance. And Heathrow issued 2 million of 6% 15-year bonds uh, dated January 1st of 2004, and they pay interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. And the bonds are issued at a price of 1728224. Okay, well, we're issuing bonds, so I know we're going to debit an account called uh, cash, right? Let's let's just put some columns out here to uh, to get us started. Uh, and you know what? I think I want to change the font here, just so uh, uh, that it's all always Times Roman. I think that uh, lends itself very well for for you guys to to read clearly and quickly. Okay, so if I've got a debits and credits uh, set up, I know on on part one. Um, I'm going to debit, why don't we just start it here, cash, and they give you the amount of 1728224, okay, and I'll format this, and I know you can't see what I'm doing because I haven't given you the whole screen to, to look at, but I've given you enough so that we can work through the problem. Um, then we know the bonds were if, issued at $2 million. If I put the $2 million in there, then I know that if I've got a debit, it must have been issued at a discount. We also know that since uh, the proceeds were less than the face value of, this, of the bonds, they were issued at a discount. So we have an account called uh, discount on bonds payable. Um, oh, and I got some other things going around here with the formatting that I want to take care of. I'll take take care of that and our credit then is to bonds payable okay everyone see our debits equal to credits there's our debits and there's our credits the discount would have to be equal that amount less that amount 271776 and then we should record what this is for so we would leave a note like sold bonds on stated issue date um, and then indent that for, to be in proper form. Okay, that takes care of the solution to part one. Now let's take a look at part two. And again, I'll just format this a little so it's easier for you to see. Um, part two, we're asked for the semi-annual period, compute the cash payment, um, the straight line discount amortization, and the bond interest expense. Okay. Now, because we're using straight line amortization, take a note that um, um, the semi-annual payments of the cash payment, the discount, and the bond interest expense are always are always going to be the same throughout the uh, throughout the life of the bond. So, how do we calculate the cash payment? Well, here's how we do it. Cash payment is going to be equal the face value of the bonds. So why don't I do this? Uh, we'll just say face value of bonds. We know that's equal to the $2 million, right? Um, then we need to know the interest rate. And we know the stated value is 6%. Let me format that so we can get that to look right. Um, and you know what? In all of this, I think we ought to get this up to a font of 12, which is a little bit easier for you all to see. Okay, um, so we have the face amount, we have the interest amount. Now we need to know uh, how often is the compounding period, and it's uh, twice a year. So um, what I need to put in here is the, uh, I don't know what we'd want to call it, the portion of the year. And we're going to calculate this semi-annually, so I'm going to use 6 twelfths. And uh, if I format that, it's going to equal 50%, right? So then the cash payment is 
is simply going to be the multiplication of those amounts and we come up with 60,000. So if I underline this and bold that so that you have the answer, maybe put a dollar amount on it, and there's your, uh, there's your answer to part two, um, which asks you to determine uh, the cash payment. Well, now that we know the cash payment, how do we calculate the discount? Now, let me uh, just freeze this so we've got a little bit of room. I'm going to slide this up so we've got some room to work. So now if we want to calculate the discount, we, we're going to take the two million dollars again. So Why don't we just copy this. First this is going to be wrong because I need to re-reference it. Face value of the bonds and we know that the cash proceeds we received were equal to, and I'm going to slide back up that amount. Now I'll slide back down so you can see it. And I know I'm doing this sort of the slow way because you had all this information. So the amount of the discount was equal to the face value less the cash proceeds. And of course, you can you can do this uh, practically directly from the entries above, but let's walk through it so it's, it's slow. And then we know that these are 15-year bonds, and we have two periods per year, so we've got to determine how many semi-annual interest periods we have. And I'm going to set that equal as 15 years times 2. So we'll get the value of 30. And now we simply divide that to determine the, um, uh, the amount of the discount each period. Excuse me, the amount of the straight line amortization of the discount. I'll just abbreviate that. And that would be equal to the 271 divided by 30, or $9,059. And I'm going to bold that so we have that answer is part two. OK, then the last time is, what's the bond interest expense? OK, well, we know that the face value of the interest is the $60,000, which we've computed above. Let me walk up and show you how we did that, right? Two, two million times six percent times one half of the year. So it's essentially two million times three percent per period. So we know we have bond interest expense and because we issued these at a discount that means uh, the amount of interest expense increases to reflect the fact that the market rate was higher than the stated rate of the bonds. So we add in that bond discount and if I sum that, oh, you know, and I realize I'm off the page. Okay, it, what you missed was I simply added that in there. And that is the straight line amortization of the discount, which is also the amount of the, the amortization amount that's going to be added to expense every time. And if I sum that, I come up with 69000 and I will bold that, and $69,059 is the bond interest expense to be recorded each period. I should label this the bond interest expense at face value. Okay, and so our answer to part two then all those parts are the cash payment is $60,000, the discount is 9059 and the bond interest expense with amortization is $69,059. And that takes care of parts 1 and parts 2 of problem 14-2A.